I had quite a laugh before I started recording because the green underside of my hat doesn't seem to uh, do my head any favors here, but I think we can uh, deal with it. Uh, I want to go over today using a Libre on uh, gear design. Now this would be the Libre Design Expert version that has the script capability. Uh, I'd like to continue later on with Adam and how to make gears in Adam. But as of right now, this is this will be strictly a Libre Design Expert functionality. I'd like to tell you about this video's sponsor, Kaiweets. They had me review the KM601, and I came into this really thinking all multimeters are just about the same. I was very surprised. Not only at what this is like to use compared to my current multimeter, but at the low price as well. The multimeter comes with two leads, a thermocouple, a set of batteries, a spare set of batteries, a multimeter carry case, a user manual, and packaging box. It has an automatic setting that will automatically detect AC, DC voltage, resistance, and continuity just by placing the leads on the source. And the screen actually lights up for easy use in low light settings, and the colors are a great touch. I've never personally seen a multimeter like this. Every other multimeter I've used has a very basic screen. The continuity tests work better than the last two multimeters I've owned, and responds with both the sound and a light at the top. The meter communicates with you if you change settings, telling you which ports to plug into. I've been able to test amperage, live sockets, diodes, AC voltage, DC voltage, resistance, temperature, and it even has a light on it for use in the dark. This is about the same price as my old multimeter, and frankly, this is the best multimeter I have ever used. Please see my affiliate link in the description below to take 10% off. So on this little script tab, we click Launch, and that will launch our console. And if I open up to the Library and Examples, and then I come down here into Mechanical, I have a Gear Generator. And this is really as simple as it looks. I simply say Run. And if you recall, I did a video series on gear design a few months ago. And you can fully define a gear by number of teeth, pitch diameter, pressure angle, and thickness. It's pretty amazing that a whole involute spur gear can be boiled down to just these numbers. But um, let's go with the default gear here. And there it's created our involute gear for us. Something to note, um, even though we didn't actually sit down and model this, this works just like anything else. I can sketch on the face of the gear. I can create a circle. I can dimension that circle. And then I can deactivate, extrude cut, and I can start modifying the solid just how I would modify any other solid in the Libra. So it's not like this uh, <clears throat> is any different than any other modeling other than the computer made it for us, which I think is very convenient. Uh, so that's how we make involute spur gears, right? Very, very, very simple. But let's go into something a little bit more complex. I can go to my tree here, and I can get rid of my, not rename, but rather get rid of my extrusion, get rid of my sketch. I can even delete my gear, and I'm left with just this profile. So making involute spur gears is really quite a simple thing. How do we make, say, helical gears. I think this is pretty simple as well. Uh, for a helical gear, I'd make a plane, select this plane, we'll go a distance, how about 15 millimeters? Be kind of a wide gear, but oh well. And then a few things I can do, right? I can import a sketch, or since I've got my console open, I can say utilities and sketch copier, and I can go back to my script and run that. And I can select my sketch here and my plane. And I've just copied my sketch. If I go to my copy profile and edit, control A, right, select everything. Up here I can say move, and I'll select rotate, and I'll choose an angle, maybe three degrees. I'll also select my center here, and there you go. I've got a preview of our three degree movement and close, right? So if I want to have a helical gear that has that three degree angle on it, then I think we've done it. I simply select loft 
and I go from here to here. And there is a very mild, well, very mild helical gear. So that's one way of making a helical gear. Um, I can edit my copy profile here. Control A. If I rotate this a little bit more, maybe I'll say 10 degrees. Select my center. Apply that. Now you'll see there's kind of a complication if I deactivate my sketch. Well, now we're going the other way, right? So there's something that goes on with the loft to where um, as I rotate and rotate and rotate, this will just jump to the next closest tooth. So we can't really do extreme angles when we try to make these helical gears, but I have a solution for you. So first, let's uh, delete this loft. I'm going to jump into my first profile and edit it. I'm going to hit Control A to select everything. Right click. I have to right click on a segment here. There we go, convert to reference. So everything is converted to reference. I'll choose my left side. I'll hold shift and convert all of these back to regular. I'm going to select an arc. And we move from one side to the other and we'll deactivate the sketch. So now I just have a tooth sketched out. I'll generate to my last feature. We'll go to my profile here. Uh, so let's pretend I didn't move this, right? What I can do is um, Control A, select all these to reference figures. We'll go to regular figures. We'll go with an arc. We'll deactivate. And I'm going to cover aloft from here to here. And we'll say OK on that. And then I'll simply uh, create a sketch on my XY plane. I'll create a circle. We're going to go equal. Hey, why is that not fully constrained? Looks like I have to go with the coincident on my origin. I guess I didn't stick that right. We're going to deactivate the sketch, extrude, I'm going to say to geometry, bam. So we've got one tooth, circular pattern. I believe this gear had 20 teeth. We'll choose our tooth as a feature. We'll choose our center axis. And I'm going to choose, of course, instance pattern. And there we have a more extreme helical gear. So that's how we can make helical teeth. Uh, what about something like a herringbone gear? Well, let me select mirror. Let's mirror this feature and my pattern and uh, my extrusion here. We'll select our plane as this face. And what do you know? We have a herringbone gear. So that's pretty handy. Now, does this herringbone work, right? I mean, we can say, oh, the helical gear, we've done that, we've done a herringbone, but does it actually mesh? So I printed out a little test sample with very, very sharp angles in the herringbone to try to make a worse case. And despite a very small uh, gear with very large layers, it meshed really well. One of the best gears I've ever printed. So I have a high degree of confidence based on my prints that uh, these gears really do mesh well. And I think they're a lot of fun to work with. So these are ways that you can make spur gears, helical gears, and herringbone gears. Um, I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.